Well, most of us will agree these are challenging times and even confronting sometimes uh, when you hear the sorts of things we have to talk about on 2020. Well, a recent federal court decision in the Tickle versus Giggle case is described as a very dark moment for women. From the ruling, women were erased from law and women now no longer have the right to exclude males from our spaces, to exclude males from their spaces or their services or their sport. Well, Kira Lee Smith is back with us. She leads the organisation called Binary. She's one of the very courageous women who are standing up to the rampant campaign to de-gender Australian society. Kira Lee Smith, a special welcome back to 2020. Always great to speak with you, Neil. Kira Lee, what happened? Uh, it's not going away, is it? Um, it's no, a look, huge is... development. Describe it for listeners. Some will be thinking, oh, that couldn't be happening here in Australia. Look, it's been a decade in the making, Neil, with Julia Gillard, one of her last acts of Prime Minister was to remove all sex-based protections from the Sex Discrimination Act. So basically she removed the definitions of male and female and there are no longer any protections under law uh, because male and female is not defined. Now it's taken over a decade. Sal Grover uh, had an app for girls, Giggle for Girls, um, that was a safe place for women to connect, whether it was to find a rental partner, a job, someone to talk to, some counselling, whatever it might be. And a man named Roxy Tickle uh, took her to court. So the, the federal court case was called Tickle v Giggle. I'm not making that up. It's not a joke. Uh, you can look it up yourself. And um, that went to hearing about four and a half months ago. And Justice Bromwich just handed down his decision where he confirmed that women have no protections in law, that uh, he said the extraordinary statement that people can change their sex, which, Neil, you and I know, history knows, science knows, the Bible knows, everybody knows, nobody has ever changed their sex, yet a federal court judge has said that a person can change their sex and therefore Sal Grover was guilty of indirect discrimination against uh, the man, the male, uh, Roxy Tickle, uh, by not allowing him access to the female-only app. Now, this has extraordinary consequences for all Australians. For Sal herself, she's been fined $10,000 and has to pay up to $50,000 in court fees. She is looking at mounting a high court challenge. But for all of us, that what that means now is that males can have free access under law to um, female only spaces, services and sport. And um, I have said over and over again, Neil, that just because something is in law doesn't make it right. We know that we know William Wilberforce's name today because slavery was legal and he fought that and had it overturned. We know Rosa Parks' name because racism was legal in America and she stood up to that. She rebelled, as did many other people, and had that law overturned because they're bad laws. This is a very bad law and harms women and children and we must resist it. Uh, one of the good things we might say about our system is that there is often a higher court to appeal to. And you mention the likelihood of an appeal, a, a high court appeal. Uh, one might hope that a high court appeal might go the way of Sal Grover. Uh, if it doesn't, that would be the nail in the coffin, would it not? Look, it would make it really difficult. The point here is, I mean, it's already cost Sal about half a million dollars to defend herself. It's cost Roxy Tickle nothing. Uh, the same will happen again in the High Court, except it will probably cost her um, more like 700 to a million, 700,000 to a million. Um, but the real problem here that can be solved tomorrow, Neil, is if the government put the definitions of male and female back into the Sex Discrimination Act. So this really lies on the shoulders of our legislators. Uh, they need to understand how dire this situation is and that they are responsible and that they can do something about it. And so for your listeners, for all of us today, it's really important that we uh, get in touch with, educate and inform our political representatives because they're meant to represent us uh, to explain to them how, how devastating this situation is and uh, they need to do the right thing and write biology, fact, evidence-based science back into law. 
Uh, Kiralee, you mentioned Julia Gillard when she was Prime Minister, and it might seem a little ironic here that it was a woman who opened the door uh, to the downfall of woman as a defining concept. Uh, Do you think she knew what she was doing at the time? Look, I mean, we can only speculate, can't we? I don't, I can't read her mind and I don't know um, what her ulterior motive may or may not have been, but she's famous for her misogyny speech and yet that action of removing the definition of female from the legislation was the greatest act of misogyny that Australia's ever seen. It allows... You know, and I'm not I'm not putting all men in this category at all, Neil. There are many, many good, wonderful, amazing men in this country, uh, but it allows the but the bad ones, the misogynistic ones, to have free reign over us. And so she won't go down in history, um, you know, for many reasons, <laughs> as um, a great prime minister. But this certainly is way up there for her to betray the female sex and our sex-based rights in this way is abhorrent. And uh, you know, we really need to get into action to uh, reverse that decision. Uh, Let me ask you about an apparent contradiction in all of this that's happening with the uh, tickle and giggle. Um, How can Roxy Tickle be a woman if women no longer exist in the law? Uh, I know you've been reflecting on this. Uh, How do you deal with that sort of contradiction? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It it makes absolutely no sense. There's no logic in this. He cannot identify legally as a woman if there's no such thing as a woman legally. So uh, I don't know, you know, if that's something that can be argued in court or not, but I know in the public space that's something that makes sense to all of us or doesn't make sense to any of us is that uh, you can't identify as a woman, one, if you're a male, but two, there's no ability to do that in law if there's no such thing as a woman in law. So it's absurd. It shows how ridiculous the law can be. And again, it's up to us with our vote and our voices to um, persuade the politicians to uh, do something about this. You know, often we'll reflect, won't we, as Christians who look at the Bible and say there's guidance here, God created male and female. Uh, But then we've got common sense then we've got biology on the side of the biblical definition and and from what's been happening and particularly with this case we might be asking what does it all mean because as you start to describe you know what happens in female spaces and those sorts of services that are available to females um what is likely to be happening with women and their spaces going forward and sports teams as we've spoken about so many times now Look, there's so many consequences, and we're already seeing many of those that just haven't been challenged in court yet. Uh, The worst, I think, is where violent male criminals are now being housed in female prisons. Uh, They are sexual uh, crimes, they're violent crimes, and yet they simply say they feel like a woman, and no one apparently is able to argue that, and so they are housed in female prisons. We know that there are males getting access to female rape shelters and crisis centres. I can't imagine, uh, you know, how vulnerable these women are who are looking for support when they have been violently sexually assaulted and then to have a male invade that space. We have males in, um, you know, things like the local swimming pools and aquatic centres using the change rooms going virtually unchallenged and we know that there are many males playing in female sports and this is all based on their feelings which are not measurable, which are uh, fluid and changeable and uh, not reliable in any way, state or form, yet the federal court has said that that's enough and that the feelings of women like myself and, you know, the listeners, their mothers, their wives, their daughters are irrelevant in this situation apparently because if a man feels like a woman, he gets priority in law. Uh, Well, Kiralee, every time I introduce you, I always say you are one of the very courageous women standing up to the rampant campaign to de-gender Australian society. Uh, Let us in on where you're up to because you have now been dragged before a whole lot of uh, lower level courts and tribunals and some things are being escalated. Uh, What's the latest with your own legal battles where this lawfare has been happening and activists have been taking you to court and taking all of your time and resources? Uh, Where are you up to? 
Look, the process is the punishment, as they say, Neil. So I've still got ahead of me court cases number seven, eight and nine. So there is an appeal on an apprehension of violence order that was denied after a full hearing in court, yet uh, the applicant still thinks that I am a violent threat, which is utterly ridiculous. I've never even met the person. And all I've done is advocate for women's sport. And then uh, two male soccer players have uh, filed vilification complaints in the federal local court against me that I will have to defend um, for calling them male. They believe that it's vilification that I've referred to them as male and I've identified them as male in female sports. And uh, Neil, I will say I will not apologise and I will not back down because women deserve uh, sex-based sports. The whole reason we have male and female sports in the first place is because there is a difference in biology. Those males, I hope they can play. They can play in many different, uh, whether it's a male competition, a mixed competition, an open competition, or even a trans competition, but they don't belong in women's sport. And, you know, we need to speak up. We need to do what it takes to protect uh, female-only spaces, services, and sport. Kira Lee Smith, you continue to lead the organisation called Binary, and uh, every time I talk to you, there's an increase in the numbers of people who are supporting and uh, they're subscribed to getting your regular email updates. They want to join you and they want to be a part of the battle and you're a wonderful spearhead for what's going on. As I understand it, more than 100,000 email subscribers and uh, there's room for plenty more. In fact, I'm sure you'd love to even double that. I mean, we might be impressed with that, but I think you'd like to see those numbers double. I'm sure you'd like to see also people who'll be prayerful for binary and you'd like to see some, perhaps, uh, who might even make a financial contribution to the challenges that you're going through and the battle that you're coming into, and it seems to be getting thicker by the day. Uh, let me give well, for listeners, Skip Shaw, what were you going to say? Oh, just look, I, I first wanted to say that um, every day I'm reminded we are called to be salt and light and the battle belongs to the Lord, but he's also asked us to be really good stewards of what he's given us. And um, I can't express enough how much I appreciate your support, Neil, and the support of all of our subscribers, because I actually can't do what I'm doing without that support. I have one role to play. I do it to my utmost, but everybody needs to be a part of this um, movement because it's going to turn the tide is the numbers. Uh, numbers are important and for listeners uh, you might want to visit the website and check out for yourself uh, those issues that you'll be able to see on there binary.org.au that's binary.org.au uh, you can become an email subscriber and as I say, and the encouragement is there, uh, support Kira Lee any way that you can. She is one of the most courageous women in Australia. Binary.org.au. Kira Lee Smith, thanks so much for sharing this update with us today on 2020. Thanks always for having me, Neil. 